She is a five-year-old female, uh, had a slip and fall and outstretched hand, diagnosed with close right supracondylar humerus fracture without DNVC. Surgeon for the case are Dr. Sandeep Patwardhan, Dr. Vivek Sodai. So this is the X-ray. So Sandeep, is this type two supracondylar fracture? Uh, we'll yes. also put it to panelists. Dr. Yeah. Agashi, what do you feel? This is type two or so medial and lateral? Both columns are broken and there is translation. I think this is type three already. Uh, though on lateral it doesn't show, but technically this would be type three. So I, I will put it as type three only yes. because it is shifted. It is shifted. There seems to be a shift, not just angulation. So to recapitulate, type 1 is where there is no posterior angulation, but there is just a crack. Type 2, where only anterior cortex breaks, posterior cortex intact, but on AP, there is no displacement. Type 3 is one, uh, you know, where you will have complete displacement. So whatever the type it is, you know, we leave it to Gartland to think about it and debate. This needs fixation. Anybody would treat this conservatively from the audience. Sandeep, over to you. Uh, yeah. Show us what you plan to do so and Tar how are things happening. Can you hear me, Taran? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So if you can come, you can see the X-ray here, which I have put up. When you start planning doing a fixation for supracondylar by my method, first thing is good planning. So we have put up the X-ray here and we have studied it as you have rightly pointed out by column fracture. There is some combination on the lateral side. Right. In extension, it is displaced and there is a break. And if you see the width of the proximal fragment to distal fragment, that's called as Gordon's index. If there is a mismatch, that suggests slight rotation also. Now what happens is that a lot of people would treat this conservatively in a slab or a cast. But to get a reduction, just look at the swelling of the elbow of this child. Right. If you I want to reduce swelling. it and cast it, I am risking compartment syndrome. So if I need to cast in gentle extension, I need pins there. So in today's world, type 2, type 2 B especially should be treated surgically and not conservatively. So I'm just going to show you the OT setup so that everybody in their own practices can follow the same. We have the Siam with the monitor in front of me. This is the Siam. The table is adjustable which goes up and down and my trolley is ready. Can I have the arm board? Now, the anesthetist is here, Dr. Himanshu is tuned to what I do. We lift the child and put the arm board on the patient's arm like this and I bring the proximal fragment to the edge. Right? Can I have the white tape? And then I just have a simple white sticking plaster in my hand and this is something which we were taught as residents which is very important. This is the most Im innovation in orthopedics. How to tear a white tape by hand. We'll have a workshop next time. Yeah, that is sign hospital training. And then I just strap this securely to this area. It's not too firm. It's just secure and I have somebody holding the board so that it doesn't move. So this is my primary arm board proximal fragment stabilization. Now against that I can bring in the Siam, Siam Antos Kare. Sandeep, there is a suggestion here that there is a person who is stabilizing this arm board yeah. from the other side. If you have a lateral support, you know, and apply that, then no. that person can be relieved of a shoulder pain in future. No, the problem is that I have three residents, I need to give them some work. <laughs> the patient <laughs> actually is on, the board is under the patient. The body weight of the patient won't allow it to move. All right. But then we must make use of our resources. So what okay. are your reduction maneuvers? Yeah, initially? so now you can see, I'll just show you first the CM. Can you see the AP now? Yes. Yeah, so first is I'm going to give gentle traction in the longitudinal direction like this. Okay. Right? After that, once I confirm my mediolateral alignment, shoot. Yeah, and more important for everybody to note is the clinical appearance. Don't always look at x-ray because what are we worried about is cubitus varus. We need to keep the alignment in valgus. So with a little gentle traction, I can put a little firm pressure here and give a longitudinal traction. 
in a type 3 if it is unstable we do the medial lateral maneuver this at this minute right now it looks pretty good okay now with this i will acutely flex it now okay and now i don't need to rotate the arm for a lateral i'll rotate the c arm for okay. a table work kara okay any questions from audience so we have to ask feel free to ask. the table going up and the c arm being rotated right right okay atma den hai thoda sa perpendicular ra sandeep some questions here yeah. uh, is that you know uh, we see the arm board and the elbow just jutting out yes. what are the tricks here how much part of the elbow you keep jut, jut out and See, is there any, any no, trick there, with there, there is no uh, protocol for it. You should be comfortable to access all round. Right. Add that a little bit. And table a little work. And any any reason where you keep why you keep the arm board short of the elbow? Meaning why don't you have it short of the elbow? Yeah. Where through and through outside? Yeah. yeah. The distal fragment has to be off. Now you can see Taral on the lateral view. Right. Yeah. So now you can see when I am 90 degrees, it is still extended. Yes. So for reduction, I need acute flexion. Sure. So I'm just going to show the anterior yeah. humeral line here. Yeah. Can you see yeah. the reduction? Now, now it goes through the center of the capital. Yeah. Can everyone see that? Previously it was going anterior to the capitulum. Now it is going perfectly to the. So what magic did you do, Sandeep? I just okay. flexed it acutely. Can you see the clinical image now? Lovely. See the acute flexion. Now imagine giving a cast in this flexion. It's just not possible that we'll be able to get away without any kind of a complication. So, now that I have confirmed my reduction, the next step is going to be preparation and draping. What uh, type of pinning are you planning, Sandeep? Uh, this as somebody is preparing it, you yeah. can just tell us. Is it going to be two lateral pins or a cross lateral pins or cross pinning, medial and lateral? Yeah, so this is a transverse fracture without much obliquity. A two lateral pinning is my choice. I won't go medially. And the pins have to be divergent and they should intersect at 30% of the width of the fracture. Which means one pin will go through the fossa and one pin will go through the column. So there is a column pin and a fossa pin. And my first pin always goes in lateral position. Right? Okay. So, I will just show you. A lot of things have been said about preparation. More and more literature and papers are coming about something called as the semi-sterile technique. You don't need full preparation like you are doing an open surgery for pinning lower end radius or supracondylar with no difference in the infection rates. We have been following this for a long time. This is my skin prep all around. Vivek, can you wear gloves? Um, yeah. Any comments from the panel, uh, Dr. Agashe? Yeah. Do you put so, pin in AP first or lateral? No, I have a little, I can say, uh, apprehension, apprehension about yes. this. Uh, the anterior skin crease cannot be prepared properly after after flexion no sir we are going to extend it because i know i have just confirmed the way i am going okay. to get my reduction okay, okay, okay. so i think so as you can see i am extending this the preparation with skin prep goes all around okay. including okay. the hand we'll drape it with a o drape i have a special pediatric o drape which i'll show you okay, okay. and uh, this was just to demonstrate before i start surgery since yesterday we have been hearing you should get the reduction before implant Okay. okay. So, so, I think that, that so that was a sort of a sample reduction. Yeah. So we always, I always draping. check it okay. whether I am able to get the reduction. Yes. Take back I, my words. I take back my words. I, I was very very aware, sir. You will be on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> and we have oh, heard. Sandeep knew that question was coming, yeah. and he had prepared it at night. Yeah. So this is the old drape. Yeah. I have a nice. Disposable O drape which I put around. So Sandeep is that O H O drape or O drape? <laughs> there's a O, there's a hole there, that's all. Take a <laughs> Yeah, okay. So now you can see again, I'll take a shoot. Madam, thoda sir. Yeah. Can you flex it? Shoot. Yeah. 
Let's so, so, so why sure. not have a assistant also scrubbed in, you know? And yeah, so Vivek, you don't need, if you want, you can have an assistant. Since you have so many residents, yeah. you can have a scrub. Yes, yes, assistant. I can have as many as I want. But people there in Maharashtra might be working alone. Yeah, yeah. Should. Yeah, so that is. I am can we see the Siam shoot? Peter? Yeah, show the Siam. Okay, so again, I'll show you here. Light ikade de taka. This is the tip of the olecranon. This is the lateral epicondyle. Okay. About a centimeter and a half away, I put my pin first on the lateral side. Shoot, please. Can, can, uh, we want to see the yeah. the picture, clinical picture. Yeah. Sandeep, yeah. please repeat what is the entry point. Yeah, because entry point. I, I feel the tip of the olecranon <laughs> and about a finger and a half, 1.5 centimeter away, uh, we've, I right. will put my pin percutaneously on the lateral condyle. One, one minute. And from the, from the side, how does it look? Yeah. From the side, can what are landmarks or how do you put Can you come this side? And all of you can see his direction of the pin is going from anterior to yeah. posterior because that's can, the direction of you the... You can see the Siam also picture. Yes. Yeah. So now I'm going to incline it along the teardrop which is 40 degrees anterior. Right, Tarak? Lovely. So Sandeep, what Siam, you're doing is basically before drilling, yeah, yeah. you are adjusting your positions yeah. under Siam. And then about 60 degrees, I'm aiming towards the medial cortex and I'm going to pass my first pin. Lovely. And I just drive it and I can feel the second cortex now. I've gone across. Shoot. So, so for so the this audience, is my first this, pin. this pin is not in the direction of axis of humerus shaft. It is going anterior to posterior because the distal humerus also is tilted that way. Yeah, now we go to AP and we check Sarakar. Sandeep, just yeah. a minute, I want to show the audience a new sign which has been described, yeah. which is this hourglass sign. Can you see this hourglass? If you see this hourglass, it means your reduction is perfect. You must see this hourglass on a lateral where, view. Where, where it is, hourglass? Go glass. out and show this. Pardon, sir? Ali, Renan, which is that hourglass? Where so this is, this is one upper upper U of the hourglass and this become the lower U yeah. of the hourglass. Taral, can you see that pin now? That is yeah, the fossa pin. We can see in the AP, right. Okay. So, I will adjust the length of this wire by withdrawing it a little because I think it's too much. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is perfect. Can you see Taral right, a, right. AP film now? Yes. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is the second pin goes in the AP. From so how the would how would can you just put a sort of a wire on the skin yeah. and show us how you would want a second pin to yeah. go? Yeah. So one centimeter away. Okay. And it's divergent, isn't and it? And now I'm going to target the column. All right. Yeah. So I'm on the bone and parallel on the column. Clinical picture larger, please. Shoot. 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 So just one more trick for the audience. What I do is I take a 16 number or 18 number needle and then put it on the skin to know my direction of the wires. And then I will confirm it and then pass a K-wire along the same direction. So with that what happens is you, you avoid multiple passages through the cartilage and the soft bone. Right. Yeah. Like you said, Taral, we put it on the skin. Yeah. You can hold it with your hand, feel the bone. Yes. And then this is what you wanted me to show, right? Right. Yeah. So then once I am on bone, this I can feel that I am on bone. Shoot. Shoot. Yeah. Okay. A little too much. Shoot. Right. Can you do it in extended position now? Yeah. Since yeah. it's fixed. Yeah. Shoot. Okay, so that is the pillar pin. Uh, your assistant can extend the yes. elbow. Can you see now? Yeah. It's still not clear. Yeah. Now this is clear. Yeah. Okay. 
So if you want, you can reposition the pins depending on your situation. Okay. And then finally we bend the pins and then we are going to cut. Yeah. So you want to check, check the stability yeah. of so your Now fixation. what I do is the yeah. tape allows me to rotate. Shoot. Yeah, so, you so can this see is this is the column view. All right. So, so this, this is the external rotation view which showed you medial yeah, column and this, this shows you the lateral column. Lateral column. So you can rotate and check that there is no movement there and your stability is adequate. And both the pins are bicortical. One is a pillar pin, one is a fossa pin. And now that actually the surgery per se is over. We bend the pins and I'm going to show you the plaster application Sandeep, also. Sandeep, the surgery is over but questions are still on. Yeah, so yeah, Dr. Yeah. Agashe has... Yeah. Sandeep. Yes, sir. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yeah. Fantastic surgery. I must say that you are an extremely skilled person. Not all of us are that. Our theatres very often are small. Yes, sir. Our assistants are not as trained as your assistants. And somehow I am little confused about this term, semi-sterile. A I person can be either pregnant or not pregnant. <laughs> You can't yes. say that she is semi-pregnant. Yes. So, uh, these are my qu queries. So, especially, and another thing is one should always, I feel, one should always operate with the thinking that something can go wrong. Yes. And in case something goes wrong, suppose my wire perforates anteriorly and I have to explore anteriorly by chance. Yes. Then I have to have full, full setup ready, uh, the assistants ready, everything ready. So, uh -huh. these are my... Yes, My sir. queries. Yes, sir. In your setup, you are doing a phenomenal job. Agree. So, th there is a learning curve to this, sir. I think Taral can also highlight the papers that have come out of US talking of this kind of a draping and procedure for daycare procedures which saves costs and has no change in infection rate or worsens things for the patient. But no, as no. you rightly said, in case you don't get a reduction, the arm board can just be pushed out and you can go ahead with exploring anteriorly. But I'll tell you, sir, in 15 years, we have not opened a single supracondylar fracture and I don't think, with a little bit of practice, I think this is quite reproducible technique. I Sa don't think Sandeep, yeah. I think there is no additional cost to proper scrubbing and draping. Yes. No, th we, we respect your choice that you want yes. to do it this way. But I'm going to take a poll from audience. How many of you would... Just scrub properly okay. and then drape. And do you think it is an additional cost? And how many you want to go for semi-pregnant technique? Okay. Not semi-sterile technique. Not. Dr. Kakatkar, yeah. Sandeep. Yes, sir. Um, well, uh, if the fracture line is going from uh, lateral to medial yes, in an oblique direction, yes, sir. then you have to pass a medial wire. Without yes, that, you can't get the stability. Yes, sir. Agreed. So, for the benefit of uh, all of us, can you give some tips about how to pass a medial wire without uh, endangering the uh, ulnar nerve? Uh, absolutely. Yes, sir. So, when we are doing that, what we need to do is extend the elbow. When I extend the elbow, when I extend the elbow, I am going to make the ulnar nerve fall back. I was not happy with that one wire, sir. I am just revising it. I am not happy with the second hold. So, which was this wire? The column pin? Yeah, the column pin. So, yes. just give me a second. Yeah, now I am okay. Shoot. Yeah, I am happier now. Hold this. So, I am just taking... I, uh, so I have a sm simple protocol. Yeah. That Sponge. Sandeep, you know, uh, so this happens many times. You pass one wire and then you think it is not all right. Yeah. And you have to revise it. I think what I do is I take a skin marking pen yeah. and on the CM I draw how I want to pass my wire. Draw yes. it first yes. and then pass the wire and I, I found that with that small little practice yes. my little struggle or you know having yeah. to revise the wire has become less. Yeah, so now to answer Dr. Kakatkar's question, yeah. anybody who has an oblique fracture where the medial condyle is a larger chunk, a cross spinning becomes mm -hmm. mandatory. Right. The first pin you will always put is your lateral pin to achieve relative stability. Right. After which you will extend the elbow. When you extend the elbow, the ulna now palpate your own ulna now will fall backwards. And then with your finger palpation, I will palpate the medial epicondyle. And with a hand, like I said, 
the K wire in the hand, you will just place the K wire on the epicondyle anteromedially and your direction has to be anteromedial to posterolateral for the medial pin. Peter, can they shift the camera on the... Here, on this side. Come on this yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah, Sandeep, please show it again. Yes, we yes. want camera to go on the opposite yeah, side. So now we are on the opposite side. <laughs> and do you have a skin marking pen? Can you show Take where the ulnar nerve would be? Marking pen and toast. And uh, what would be your entry point? Yeah, so ulnar nerve is here. Okay. Right. When I flex it, the ulnar nerve comes in my way. After I have lateral pin here, ulnar nerve is here. Somewhere here will be the epicondyle. So I will extend it, which makes the ulnar nerve go backwards. And then I will put a pin with my hand on the medial epicondyle here. And then when I feel bone, then I will attach the drill to it and I have to go from anteromedial to posterolateral, always with extension. That is the way. If you are in doubt, if there is a very big swelling, okay, so, yeah, this is the ulna now, of course. So you want to go anterior so that you skip yes. the ulnar now? Yes. And you want to keep the elbow in extension, extension. so that you prevent subluxation yes. of the ulnar. And when I pass the pin, I put my assistant's hand or thumb here so that at worst I will impale his thumb and not the ulnar now. And from here we go anteromedial to posterolateral from the epicondylar region. If there is a doubt, you can make a small opening there, put a suction cannula or a small drill sleeve. You do not need to explore the ulna now. You should make sure where your pin is on bone, there is no nerve or perineurium. I think Sandeep, this statement is very important. If you are taking a medial small incision, it is not to feel the ulna. Yes. Not it to is to make the sure the that we are on the bone without any neural tissue or perineurium there, so it doesn't get entangled. One and more trick I use many times, if you are there is a lot of swelling, you are not able to feel the epicondyle, make a small incision to feel the epicondyle. And yes. put a K wire sleeve directly on yeah. the epicondyle. So that drill when you sleeve, drill, yeah, that's what I said. You will put not a, entangle the ulna. Yeah, put a drill sleeve and then put your pin. So that is the way when you have an oblique fracture where medial pin becomes mandatory. Indications for medial pinning are medial comminution, oblique fracture with a large medial chunk, or instability after lateral pinning, which Allah. is seen on rotations. All of you can see the left hand of Sandeep <coughs> and it's holding the pulse. Yeah, I'm looking how is, at the pulse. How is patient's pulse? Absolutely fine. How is your pulse? Mine is always the same. How is the audience pulse? <laughs> audience pulse is great. They are very happy with this surgery. All right. So now thank what you, you, thank you, Sandeep. Now I'm going to show you the casting also because I feel it is important. So give me a moment to just dress it up, remove the drapes and show you the cast for we a will. 20 seconds. We will. We will. Dressing Dr. Taral? Yes. Yeah. Questions? Yeah, no, Ajit, no. Yeah. Um, this is one of the areas where we tend to have multiple passes because the entry may not be satisfactory or the direction may not be satisfactory. Um, like in other areas like you were discussing yesterday, uh, are there papers or reports or whatever of physical damage due to that? Yeah. So you have to minimize the passage of sure. KY for two reasons. Yeah. Because Katri, you Katri. want to avoid damage to the lateral condyle physis. Second is, if you pass multiple wires, these wires are initially going through the cartilage yeah. and then through the bone. If you pa if you make multiple punctures yeah. in the cartilage, your hold on the wire itself Katri. becomes very Katri. loose. Katri. And then all of us have experienced Katri. that. Katri. Now the whole quest hold, hold is fingers. how to minimize Katri. the number of wire Katri. attempts. Katri. How to get it right the first time. Okay. You know, first short wire. <laughs> that is all what we want, first short wire. And the ways, there are various ways to do it and I use two tricks which I am going to share with you. The first trick is on the C-arm, I always draw with a skin marking pen how my wires are going to go in AP and lap. The second trick is known as wish wire. Yeah. yeah, we are with you. We are with you. Yeah, Taral, so I just wanted to show everybody again when you cast yes. Yes. How you put the cotton, I think, is also important. Right. Yeah, so when we are going here, we are making sure that the elbow is partly extended. Okay? How much extension? No, it is just about 20, uh, 70 degrees, 70 let's say flexion. 70 degree flexion. All right. And then I am just going around. Perception. Wrong, wrong side. Yeah, either. And oh. this is in supination. Yeah, supination. supination. Excuse me, sir. 
Excuse me, sir. It's not important to give too much padding. You should not get a lateral view It's before casting. Just about a layer of fabric or your soft roll. Shouldn't we see the lateral view before casting? And then I use this lateral view. Ah, huh? people yeah. want to see the lateral view. Yeah. So on this, the CM, right? Yeah. So this is the plaster material that I like to use. This is a semi soft or it's a delta cast, which is soft delta cast. So this we just roll, and this does not need a plaster cutter for removal. Right. I don't use a slab. There's always been this controversy also slab or cast. I have casted all my supra condylars primarily, and after you put the cast, please don't flex the elbow. So what I do is figure of eight. See this, Tarel. I just wanted to show this. Yeah, yeah. From here, I go here and come back here. Figure of without eight. putting mm. flexion material and flexing it. Right. Figure of eight. Okay. So this is an easy way to keep. Whatever flexion you want, without flexing, with plaster material going into the crease, right. and then you can just cover it up. So the flexion blisters and problems which happen in the flexor crease are avoided. And then this is an excellent soft cast which can be unwrapped in the OPD. You don't need a cutter for this. And most of the kids are pretty happy with. This kind of a plaster, which gives them comfort. There are some waterproof liners also available, but I am not very comfortable allowing them bathing facility. Yeah, so, secondly, the waterproof condor. liners in our country don't work. I think yeah. a lot of children get allergy. Yeah, sweat cotton. as well as the water remains inside, and they get skin rashes. By, by our, you know, by nature we sweat. Yeah. Indian. So, yeah. I don't think. So now you can see work, the cast. Does not need to be in acute flexion, right? Yeah, and that makes it very comfortable. Okay, so I was just coming back to those uh, three points. So first point yeah. I said was marking with a skin marking pen. Second point was a wish wire. So like how you do for slip femoral capital epiphysis, you keep actually wire on the skin, and see on lateral how it looks. Then and keep it on the skin, see it how it looks on AP, and then. With a skin marking pen, you draw those two wire lines on the skin, and wherever they meet is your entry point. And third trick I use is use a hypodermic needle. So I put a hypodermic needle in the direction I want to pass the wire. It's very easy to maneuver. You can also pierce it through the cartilage. And once I confirm my hypodermic needle, then I will replace with a, a K wire. So these are some of the tricks I use. Any All right, Taral, we are done here. Any are further questions any from the audience? Any more questions or you can go on with cases. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll just ask audience if there are any huh? further comments. Yeah. Finally, you look and at the capillary refill that everything is all right. Yes. Make sure there is no impingement in the thumb, ear of the plaster. There's adequate space available <laughs> because oh. you don't you don't want a phone call in the middle of the night from anybody, the mother or the your resident. Sandeep. Yes. Sir. Yes. Sandeep. Yes, sir. People want to see the final lateral also. Lateral, lateral. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm. Sir, regarding timing of surgery, sir, if the patient comes in the evening, should he be taken up straight away or uh, wait for the next morning? So, Sandeep, what would be your timing of surgery? Just because it's PTOC, <laughs> it was not operated in the next day. I think we all are comfortable doing yeah. the next day. Yeah, yeah, emergent. If pink pulseless and we had a ICL on it, the pink pulseless that is the lateral. The only emergency is massively swollen elbow with yeah. a pink pulseless, and if there is no pulse, Shoot. you will do at night. If Definitely. the pulse okay. is felt, Shoot. you can do it the next day morning. Sir. Most Shoot. of the time, since I have a OT list happening the next day. Taral, you are okay I with the lateral? It. Yeah. Okay, teardrop looks lateral good. Lateral is lateral yeah. is good. Yeah. Sir, and now I am rotating it. So now we have the arm rotating. After the pinning is done, perfect. Yeah, Absolutely it is excellent. perfect. Lad. It is excellent, Sandeep. And Thank suppose you, sir. sir, the child has okay, URT. So I sign out something. from here and so supra condylar fracture is 80% reduction and 20% fixation. I think Sandeep, you won the battle when you got the best reduction. Yes. I think wires just uh, had to hold it. Yeah. One more Sandeep. question from. So yes, sir, Sandeep, sir. If the swelling is too large, you will still advise casting and not slab. 
if there is swelling sandeep yeah. yes uh, then you still put a plaster or you put a slab or no, you buy no. one no that's what i was trying to tell you this soft cast not uh, can you get the yeah you are here see yeah. this yes rajiv so, i think it was your voice see this this is a soft cast which allows expansion so sir. this allows me expansion and i will the all these kids are admitted overnight for a day to watch how the stretch pain is whether they require a lot of analgesics right so you monitor the three a's anxiety agitation and increasing analgesic requirement if that is the situation i will split it i think a slab does not give adequate uh, support and in fact the bandages and the plaster keeps on getting loose i feel this is more secure if there is edema you can always slit it in the evening rounds you need to monitor them and this can continue then as the final fixation modality also i always call them back after one week for a cast check at that time if i find cast is too loose i will unwrap it and put a new one so the, these are known as patwardhan's priorities you know when whole world wants to give a slab he will still give a cast and he will not change but we 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 respect that for the reasons he is doing but i just want to say that uh, you can press the soft cast but it it cannot expand dr agash's view on that you know so if in doubt i would split it yeah sir excuse me sir so so i think the message that should go out taral is monitoring is more important whether you are putting a Absolutely. plaster of paris or a fiber cast or a soft cast and you do what is comfortable to you with full confidence that you are going to tackle the problem if it arises right personal experience 15 years every patient supracondyla always casted with fiber cast haven't had a problem right and and the way you plastered it you know very loose kind of plaster yeah. without any yeah so this small tricks i think help if you see I the lateral x ray there is a lot of gap between yeah. the the plaster and the skin so that also you know is seen very well dr agash sir excuse me sir one question sir if, uh, yeah. if the reduction is unstable how can you hold the reduction before putting kyc sandeep yeah yes, if sir. the reduction is unstable yes. what would you do reduction if Only it is unstable on rotations i will add a medial pin no how can you hold the reduction before putting kyc sir only simple flexion will hold the reduction or any maneuver needs yeah so so i i can uh, answer that if the reduction is really unstable this is what we call as type 4 gartland if you extend it extends if you flex it flexes doesn't stay in one position in that case you will have to hold the reduction before parting the pin and some of the ways for doing it is to pass a proximal humeral wire just above the fracture so that you have control over the proximal typically this k wire which i pass is not a 6 inch wire but a 9 inch or a 12 inch wire so that you know your hands can hold it well my other wires goes to the distal fragment which i use as a joystick and after confirming re the re reduction either you can you know uh, uh, the same joystick wire you can take advance it or pass another wire with someone holding that position so these are tricky situations and uh, 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 you know it needs special techniques to do that some people okay use, taral uh, so mosquito force i'll talk about here yeah i think last question then yes. last two questions sure. and then yeah. we'll uh, sure, sure. yeah the question is that with the such a uh, good maneuvers and techniques of uh, getting reductions so whether incidence of open reductions are getting less and less i think less and less, and less are there any indications where you feel here the patients need an open reduction yes sandeep Except your indications yeah. for open reduction so i think taral here is where i always talk about something called as situational orthopedics you are aware that i keep on saying this in my situation it might be different i haven't done one for a close fracture for 15 years but if anybody is not confident in a peripheral area where his expertise equipment assistance is doubtful he is fully justified in doing an open reduction and getting a good reduction it's not important whether it is closed or open as long as it is done well the only suggestion would be if you are doing an open reduction take the incision anteriorly where the spike is the anteromedial or the anterolateral side depending on displacement don't go by the posterior midline tricep splitting thing which creates a lot of fibrosis and stiffness with that anterior incision push that spike back in and facilitate a close reduction and do your pinning 
so, so I, I it's know okay to do a open reduction absolutely no problem and before that please try the joystick and percutaneous techniques because unless you try them you won't get over the learning curve sandeep we knew that dr kotade is going to ask that question and dr agashe has a case for his friend to answer that question okay so we are going to show an anterior open reduction yes. uh, through a case which dr agashe last question yes uh, so if ma there is massive problem. swelling sir and the bony landmarks are not clearly visible sir right yes. so uh, tips and tricks for that sir and secondly sir pronation supination that is not of any relevance now sir no sir once you pin it putting it in pronated position what was described earlier was to tighten up the facial sleeve to hold reduction tightly because that was the era where we were giving casts or slabs when you pin it it is irrelevant once the stability is achieved and massive swelling i think everybody should develop something called as finger memory once you taral as he said walk the bone with your k wire there is you have to develop a feel even if there is swelling that you are on bone and then go no. across and KY, the second cortex feel kvr tip should have sensations <laughs> you know it should become your extension of your finger extension yes, yes and that will again i am saying unless you do it you will not develop it so it's a learning curve sandeep absolutely the last last and the, the last question so for your surgery to yes. remove the kvx yeah so my answer. protocol is 7 years and below 3 weeks 7 yes. years and above 4 weeks in the opd so many time patients ask me this question sir when will you remove the kvr my answer is when the fracture heals yeah so i remember dr kotadia you know i had come to solapur and we went to bhageshri wada and it was over and we asked him udya keva yo wada betnar wada sampnyache purvi ya so so this way the answer is once the fracture heals we will remove so it may be 3 weeks yeah. 4 so weeks so normally 7 to 8 years and less 3 weeks no, about no, that 4 no, weeks and final comment please do not send a patient to your physiotherapist at all yeah, after yeah. removing plaster even even if she is your better half yeah even if she is your better half Absolutely. because children will get back active range of motion and Later. vigorous manipulation so will cause more problems so let's go on to the cases now yeah. uh